somebody asked me if they could get an N-word pass? What? Yeah, they just sent me an email. If I send you $50, can I get the N-word pass? And I thought, hmm, why pay me $50 when you could be racist for free? <laughs> she tackles racism through comedy. She's the only black woman comedian in Calgary, and she's also the president of Black Lives Matter in that city. Adora Wolford joins us live this morning to talk comedy, activism, racism, and how all of these things intersect in her world. Good morning, Adora. How are you? Good morning. I'm fantastic. It's a beautiful day in Calgary. Nice. I was just saying, you're a true Renaissance woman. So it's like mom, check, activist, model, a comedian. It's really incredible. And you're using your platform in such a unique way at this time. So we just saw a snippet of your comedy show. How is that reception going in this day and age with the Black Lives Matter movement and making people feel... Uh, we always hear about getting comfortable with feeling uncomfortable, but then using comedy to do that. The ultimate way to create tension and make people uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, people are becoming more and more open to hearing me talk about my experiences with racism. Mm -hmm. So I always think that it's interesting that people are like, well, why do you assume that your audience is racist? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know them. I have no idea. But yeah. we usually find out by the end of my set uh, who they think is racist, and it's usually me. Mm. Um, so now people are really beginning to be like, oh, this is not her attacking. This is just her talking about her crappy experiences with racism because I don't know any good experiences uh, with racism that BIPOC people are having. Yeah, and when people are like, it's not a Canadian problem, that's happening over there you talk about your experiences. I've been watching many interviews, you know, preparing for the interview today. You have dealt with it firsthand on more than one occasion, one involving your child. Oh, yeah. Um, I have 13-year-old twin girls, and they have experienced racism so often. I have a 22-year-old biracial son also. He has mm -hmm. been experiencing racism. It's truly the reason why I am on this journey because I'm okay with fighting for myself, but they're babies. And I know how hard that transition is into adulthood when you don't think that you're valued. But um, some of the things that my children have faced are, you know, in, in daycare, I've watched another child call them poop. And I was like, mm, I think that this is racism. And by the end of the week, my children were kicked out of the daycare. Oh, my gosh. So we were scrambling. Uh, we left the school that we were in last year uh, because of racism. And, you know, the principal said to me that he thought it was, it was a gardening tool. And I said, if you don't know what that word means and you don't know how it affects black women differently, then I don't know if you have the skills to be in this position. He was not happy with me, and that's mm -hmm. okay. Does it have to be said? It has to be said, and only in talking about it will people finally learn. And can there be, you know, growth and healing? And I know as an activist, you said, you know, you stand a proud six foot one. I'm also, I'm a fellow tall girl, <laughs> five ten. And you said you use your height to your advantage. Talk to us about that. Uh, yeah, I also wear heels. Yeah. So very often I show up six five. If I wear the big hair, I can be seven feet tall. So people think that that's intimidating, mm. but I use it to keep myself safe because, mm. uh, quite frankly, racism is violent. So when I walk into a room, everybody knows. Uh, everybody sees me. I have blue hair. I mean, just the fact that I exist is a political statement. Yeah. Every black woman who exists is a political statement, and I love all of them. And this Monday on City TV, we're airing an original documentary. It'll premiere this Monday, and it's called In Their Own Words. Talk to us about what we can expect, and what do you want people to know about you and your story, and what do you hope people take from your story? Well, what people can expect is me being bold, 
saying the things that might seem difficult but are definitely necessary and to laugh and to feel something. I really like to uh, be impactful, uh, engaging, and be funny. Those are the three things I try to do every time I speak. And I really hope that people understand that anti-racism is a practice. I call it the blow up that you need because mm. I'm an old lady and I get to look like this. <laughs> but also, I think that whatever you have, you can use it to impact the world in a positive way. Mm. So nobody thought that, you know, somebody showing up looking pretty, making jokes, was going to be impactful uh, in the world. But I'm just being myself and I want things to be better. So whatever you've got, put it out there in the world. Uh, I didn't think that... I was going to be a comedian, but apparently sometimes I'm funny. You, you are breaking down barriers one joke at a time. Who knew? Like you said, using art to truly break through. I think it's incredible. Love to you and your family, Adora. For more information, check it out, friends. The documentary, again, is called In Their Own Words. Go to citytv.ca for more information. Love to you, Adora. Thank you. Thanks, Claire. Good to see you.